Hallelujah. Okay. Glory, glory, glory. Glory only. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, so yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We glorify you. Praise your name, God. You are worthy, King Jesus. We honor your name, O oh God. Doing it buffering again. Rebuke this thing in Jesus' name. I command you to work clear today. No distractions, no buffering. We command the clear airways to flow normally, that it would function according to the will of God. Hallelujah. Good evening, cousin. Amen. Thank you for joining tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God is amazing. He's amazing. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We magnify your name, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. Mm, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, we're going to get started in just a moment. I'm just looking up some other things at the, the time. Hope you had a great day. Mine has been relaxful, been just chilling all day, just tired, just tired. We had a real full Sunday, and it just drained me. So today, I just yesterday and today, I just been feeling that spirit of rest. Take the time out and just rest, and that's that's good. Sometimes to get to a place where you just learn how to rest in the presence of the Lord, where God can refresh you and revive you by His Spirit. It's so important. God bless you, my friend, my BFF, Cornell. Bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. The Bible says, where well, there's two or three gathered in the name of the Lord, that he is in the midst. How many of you know God is with us right now? His presence is here. His anointing is here. His power is here to manifest, to heal, and deliver you in any situation, any circumstance you may be engaged in at this time in your life. So you're right. We need that rest. Sometimes we need that rest. Learn how to just rest in the presence of the Lord because God, sometimes he will force you to rest. If you uh, find yourself busy all the time. Then we had a full weekend because we had our annual eighth block party this past Saturday. And boy, was it full, busy. Running all over the place Saturday and, and just dreaming. Then Sunday had an explosive service in the church where the anointing was so high and the fire of God was moving in the house. I was on fire to where I felt like I just couldn't get this, this heat off of me. It was just so intense. I, from the time I walked into the sanctuary to set up the, the uh, live stream for Sunday morning service, I had such an intense fire just burning on, on on my flesh to where it just it just was hot. I was sweating. And I'm like, what is going on? Why am I so hot? And God began to reveal to me that was his presence. The fire of God came upon me, and I began to experience God's presence even in worship. And even as I began to read the, the scripture for Sunday morning, I sung a song, and God has smiled on me. And I love that old song. My, my uncle used to sing it all the time. My uncle Henry, when he passed away about 10 years ago or so, um, he used to sing this all the time. My dad used to sing it all the time. So it's like 
That's why I'm burning my spirit. God has smiled on me and it has set my soul on fire. And I tell you, when you have that connection with God, it's a fire that's going to burn inside of you. That's going to, that you can't put it out no matter what you do. You just cannot put that fire out. And that's, that's when you know you're being connected in the presence of the Lord because the anointing is flowing with such power to do exploits through your life. That means extraordinary things and supernatural things God would do when you get connected with him. And that is so amazing. I love the presence of the Lord. I, every time I go through trials and tests my own life, I find my comfort resting in the presence of the Lord, my peace. Just get into a place of worship Sometimes just lying down in his presence say, God, I just want to just feel your presence all over me. And God will begin to cover you like a blanket. You can sense a presence over you like a blanket just embellishing you. And it just you just got to just lay there until you get that release to get up. That's so awesome. I love the presence of God. I love when God shows up on the scene. I love when God began to work situation not that you can't fix yourself. He turned things around in your favor when you're going through troubles and trials in your life and it becomes difficult and challenging. God shows up in the nick of time and it's so awesome, so awesome. So I encourage you tonight to get into the presence of the Lord. Get in your word, get in your word. Allow the spirit of God to begin to draw you to the presence where you feel this presence like a blanket covering you. You begin to feel the revelation of God flowing in your heart through divine intervention of the Spirit of God, because God is moving in a supernatural way every day of my life, but he's looking for a people who are surrendered, who don't mind yielding themselves to his presence. And I tell you, when you do, God will do something awesome through you every single time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I feel the presence of God tonight already. But we even got started because I feel the presence of God moving on the inside. It's an anointing just flowing right now, even in the atmosphere around where you are. Whatever it is you need God to do tonight, I feel the Spirit of God saying, just tap into the Spirit. Allow yourself to begin to drink from the wine of the Spirit. Begin to eat the bread of the Word because the more you feast on the table of God, God will satisfy your hunger and your thirsting. And He begin to fill you with Himself like never before. Well, you would you know with, without a shadow of a doubt that God is moving there in the midst. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. So we're going to open up in a word of prayer, and then we're going to get into our word tonight. And uh, I just pray that this just blesses somebody tonight. We're still in our book, The, Bata, the, uh, the Bait of Satan, The Bait of Satan, um, the uh, Freedom from Offenses, Freedom from Offenses, uh, and from the deadly trap of offense freedom living free from the deadly traps of offense and that's what we have to do every day is allow the spirit of god to draw us away from the baits of satan because satan is going to test you it's a guarantee he's going to test you to try to get you to falter and to begin to uh, lose your your character and lose your identity and lose your 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 hunger and thirst drive for god he wants you to become bankrupt in, in your spiritual bank account. He wants you to become uh, in a place where you're dormant, where you're just in a shell and can't seem to get out of. He wants you to get stuck and locked in a place where you can't see no hope or freedom. But I want you to know tonight that the Spirit of the Lord is, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is here right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was just sending a link to different people right now. Uh, that's what I was doing. So praise the Lord. So we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer. And I pray that you all had an awesome, wonderful day today and that you allow the Spirit of God to minister to your heart, to keep you secure in His presence. No matter what challenges you have gone through, to know that you are stronger than what you think you are and that God is on your side. Our subject tonight is going to be the Great Expectations. We start out in uh, talking about the different types of love that, that we are at this demonstrate in this world, the agape, the, uh, the philo, and the eros, those th three different types of love. We talked about a, a Christian being offended and cannot release it. We talked about last week, and we talked about the massive offense. 
So right now, so Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come in for your awesome presence and thank you for this opportunity to break the bread of life. I pray tonight, Father God, that the inspired word will begin to fill our hearts. So God, fill the empty spaces in our heart with your presence, God, that every chain, every shackle, every stronghold, every bad habit, every addiction will be broken off our minds today, oh God, that we have nothing to hinder us from coming into your presence, to sense your presence moving inside of our lives, to, that we can see you working, God, in our lives to perfect the thing that concerns us. We thank you for new visions, for new dreams, for ambitions, new ambitions, God. We thank you for desires, Father God, to want to serve you and live a life for you, God, every day that we find ourselves being attacked by the enemy, God. We know where to run to, where to the rock, which is higher than I. We can come to the hills, which comes our help from the presence of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're right there with arms open wide like you were with the prodigal son, Father God. You were right there waiting on him to change his mind and change his heart to come back home. And when he did, Father God, you received him as if he never even left and restored him back into right standing and right relationship and right honor, God. Tonight, we ask that you do that, God, for someone who may be feeling, Father God, in their spirits broken, someone who may be feeling wounded, someone who may be feeling hurt, Father God, tonight that you mend the broken hearts and bind their wounds, that you will begin to fill those empty spaces in their lives and remove from us, oh God, any form of offense, God, that would try to lodge somewhere in the crevice of our heart to make us, Father, live in a place, Father, it's not of you, O oh God. Break down the shadows of darkness and begin to reveal the light of truth that will open up our hearts to be receptible to the word of God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but the word of God has the power and ability to save souls. The word of God has the power to set you free from any offense, any demonic activity that may be going on in your life. The word of God has the power to redirect your steps back in the way you need to be in God. No matter what you go through in this life, the word tells us having done all to stand. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, to find my brother and be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. And then it says, and having done understand, stand there for the full armor of God to stand against the wild of the devil. So you have the power at your exposal. All you got to do is believe it by faith. I was listening to Pastor P PJY uh, this evening. P I think it's PJY. I was listening to him earlier, and he was talking about this one point concerning how when Jesus, uh, he, he uh, spoke about the disciples who was on the ship when the storm came, he was asleep. He said, why did you doubt? Oh, your little faith. And that was a very uh, a stern, uh, 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 a stern rebuke, a stern rebuke. Why are you uh, of little faith? And he didn't say they didn't have any faith, but he said they had a little faith. And one thing about it, as a child of God, every day we got to study God's word in order to grow in our faith. If I don't study the word of God, how am I going to build my spiritual muscles? We, we find ourselves engulfing in television and movies and everything the world has to offer us to satisfy and appease our flesh. But when it comes to the things of God, it's a struggle. Why is that? Why is it a struggle? Anyone can give me an answer. Why is it a struggle to hear the voice of God when we so distract with everything else the world offers? You know, it's something because when you think about it, you sit out. Sometimes I, I tell you what God does to me sometimes. Many times I'm by myself at home. And I find myself sitting sometimes in a quiet room, just listening. I don't turn on the television. I don't turn on the radio. I don't turn on music on Spotify or YouTube music. I just sit in a quiet place. And guess what happens? The peace of God begins to cover me. And I feel God's presence in the atmosphere around me. And all of a sudden, I get a rhema word. Just in the quietness, in the stillness, God is there. When everything else is silent, God has a way to take you out of the place of the noise. Many times we're around a noisy place, but I found out, I used to do this a uh, few years ago. I used to go down to Starbucks all the time, down on 16th in Wisconsin. I would go down there, I would take my tablet, I will read books. 
and it'd be a noisy place. And I learned how to adapt in a noisy place to get a revelation. It, it's kind of unusual and it's kind of strange, but what God does for me in a noisy place, I can be in the place where there's so much chaos going on and don't be, be sensitive to none of it. I don't hear nothing. I got to the place I can tune out every sound but the voice of God in a noisy place. Can you do that? Can you find yourself in a noisy place still hearing God's voice? That shows how much discipline that you have in your heart towards God's voice. Because even in a chaotic place, I still can hear that still small voice speaking a word of hope a word of peace, a word of love, a love of a word of endurance, how much God cares about me, how God is rooting for me to keep holding on to his word. Don't let go of my faith in God, even in the place of trouble. That's why David said in the Psalms many occasions, he said, I cried unto the Lord and he what? He heard me. So God heard me, not only did he hear me, but he delivered me from all my fears. Whatever it is that's attacking you that becomes fearful, some dealing with cancer, some dealing with diabetes, high blood pressure. Sometimes the diabetes is irregulated. It's not functioning where it needs to be. So you're facing having a stroke. But one thing I found out, it doesn't matter what the situation is, when I begin to tap into heaven's frequency, I hear a sound. And that sound comes from the voice of God, letting me know that I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Isn't it amazing? Because God loves us so much, but instead of us hearing God's voice, we hear the noise. We're drowned by society. We're drowned by social media. We're drowned by our job, opportunity, things we're doing at work, and people feeding us with a bunch of garbage and just making you a dumping ground. We're drowned it to where it begins to bombard the voice of God when he's trying to speak to us. And God is saying tonight, don't allow yourself to be distracted by the things the enemy has to offer you. It's very vital to your Christian growth to learn how to get in a still, quiet place where you spend time, intimacy with God, where you hear God's voice giving you a rhema word. A rhema word is a specific spoken word from the heart of God for you. And that word God speaks will begin to cause you to take that same word to help somebody else. So tonight our lesson is dealing with great expectations. How many of you got a great expectation for something to happen in your life? I don't know about you, but I'm expecting God one day to put me in a position where I have my own church again. That's my desire. So my great expectation is to one day walk as the shepherd of my own congregation. And when you have that type of ambition in your heart, you're going to keep doing what you're doing for the kingdom of God. You might be serving in a church. You might be singing in the choir. You might be a deacon or on the usher board. You might be on an auxiliary board. You, you might be a trustee. doesn't matter what your position is in the house of God. You need to serve as if you're serving the Lord himself in your sanctuary. And when you get that type of attitude, God says, whatever it is you believe him to do in your life, it might be starting a business, might be a shoe business, might be a clothing, might be a hair business, doesn't matter what the business is, your expectations, you need to first do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. That is very important. I realized that love I was giving was being sown to the spirit and eventually I will reap those seeds of love. I didn't know where from, but I knew the harvest would come. 
No longer did I see it as a failure when love wasn't returned from the person I was giving it to. It freed me to love that person even more. You know, this is, this is something. I read this last week, but I, th I thought about something. Reading this even right now. When I was giving love, sown by the Spirit of God, you're going to have people going to reject that love. You're going to have people who you're speaking to that you're trying to love on. They're mean. They're hateful. They're stubborn. They're prideful. They're hurt. They feel abandoned. They feel like no one cares about them. So they don't receive the love. You got people in the streets, homeless people you're going to run across, trying to demonstrate love too by giving and helping them. And they're bitter. But one thing I realize when I keep on sowing the seeds of love to no matter who it is supposed to go to, God is the one. He said, one waters, one planteth, but what? God gives the increase, right? So if God gives the increase, so my labor of love will not be in vain. So the more I keep planting the seeds of love in an unlovable person, Something eventually is going to break. As Tasha Kansa, something has to break because of the spirit of God that's inside of you, that's wooing you and keep driving you to keep demonstrating the love of God. Even when they don't want to receive it, God says something is going to break. So you got to keep on doing what God tells you to do. If more Christians recognize this, they wouldn't give up and become offended. That is a very key point that we need to pay attention to. If we understand that it's God that's behind the scene pushing you to love people, you're not going to be offended when people reject it. There are many times I've been in situations, places where I spoke to people, they frowned at me, spoke to people, they said, well, who are you talking to? Are you talking to me? ready to defend themselves just because I said hello. But I found out if I was to get into my feelings, they're going to respond the way they responded to me. So as a child of God, we have to be proactive. And what I mean by proactive is means standing your word and allowing God to give you self-control and temperance. Because part of fruit of the Spirit is to be long-suffering, gentle and meek, forbearance and temperance and self-control because if I don't learn how to have the character of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to be easily offended. When things are not responded the way I expect it to be. So my great expectation needs to be no matter what God tells me to do, that somebody is going to respond in love. The word says, if, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. So we walk in a flesh, a selfish or flesh love that's easily disappointed when our expectations are not met. So if I'm walking in a selfish love, that selfish love is that brotherly love. You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. You treat me right, I'll treat you right. That selfish love, it says, if you don't respond the way I'm expecting you to, I'm not talking to you no more. I won't have anything to do with you. I'm not going to see, when I see you in the street, I'm going to pass you by. Why? Because I'm selfish in my own love. And a lot of people that are selfish in love, they love themselves more than anybody else. So everything they do, they don't care about the interests of nobody else. They only care about how they can please themselves. So I can please myself. I can go shopping for myself. I can go to the movies by myself. I can go to a club by myself. I can go to this party by myself because I'm all selfish. So everything I do is for me and me only and not you. But when a child of God has the God's great expectations. Anything that I do, I'm going to do for the benefit of somebody else's well-being. That's amazing. That is so amazing. Glory to God in the highest.
because I want to see everybody else feel better. And if even doesn't doesn't help anyone does anything for me, I still feel good because I've done something for somebody else. Just like our block party. The past weekend, many prizes were raffled off. Many people received different types of gifts, different things. Why? There was food, there was events taking place because of the love of God that our church demonstrates to the community. The great expectation is for many souls to be saved. The gospel is being preached, and I believe people were touched on this weekend. But if you don't have the heart for God to serve and love somebody else, you have done all this stuff and look for your own self-approval and praise brought to you for what I did. So one thing about God, if I have expectations about certain persons, those people can let me down. They will disappoint me to the degree that they fall short of my expectations. And one thing about God, God wants you to have an expectation of always demonstrating the love of God, not always walking in divine order to serve others. Because Jesus said the greatest in the kingdom is who? A servant. So anything I do, I do to serve somebody else to the glory of God. So people will disappoint you. But if I have no expectation about someone, anything given is a blessing and not something old. How many times have you been in that type of mindset <clears throat> where you've done stuff for people and it seemed like they weren't grateful? You might have gave them a ride to the store. You might have bought them a specific item from the store that God put in your heart to give to them and they weren't grateful for what you gave them. And they look at you and say, that's all you got? You ain't got nothing better than this? I've learned something when I was married years ago that it doesn't matter how grandizing things may appear. It's the small stuff that can reach the heart. And one thing about it, God is the same way. God will sometimes show up in a small way in your life to see what your expectation is going to be and how much, how much gratitude you have towards him. And then God can bless you with something greater because he knows if you can receive the small things, then he got something bigger to give to you. You receive that even greater and give God the glory. So we got to get out of ourselves as children of God and not be so easily offended. We set ourselves up for offense when we, we require certain behaviors from those who we have relationships. The more we expect, the greater the potential of offense. The more we expect, the greater potential of offense. Walls of protection. When we talk about walls of protection. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. It says, a brother offended. It's harder to win than a strong city. And contention are like the bars of a castle. We talked about this last week. I'm just recapping what we talked about because it's so important to pay attention to the details. A brother offended. You've been around offended people. They hard to win back. They hard to get them to forgive you if you've done something wrong to them. Because their heart have been broken. They've been hurt by the one they trusted. They, depended on, relied on. And because of that, now they feel you don't deserve forgiveness. You don't deserve mercy. So anytime you come around with a heart to want to say, forgive me, they shut you down. They strike out at you with gnashing teeth because of the vengeance in their heart to get even with you. So you got to get to the place in yourself. If you've done anybody wrong, whether they receive forgiveness or not, Go to them anyway. The Bible tells us before you offer your arms to the Lord, you got to make amends with your brother and ask him to forgive you and then come back again and offer your arms to the Lord. Because I cannot serve God with an attitude of gratitude if I have any form of offense in my heart 
or anyone hold offense towards me. So I got to make things right between my brother and my sister and I forgot to heal my brokenness and heal their brokenness. The focus of offended Christians is inward and introspective because a Christian offended keeping lies in their heart and they refuse to let go of it. And that's a dangerous place to be as a child of God, seeking your own interests, holding on to offenses and not letting go. The word says, love does not seek its own, but hurt people become more and more self-seeking and self-contained, right? Love does not seek its own interests. So it's not about me, it's about other people. But a hurt person, they're self-seeking and self-contained, so they keep it boxed in. In this climate, the love of God waxes cold. And that's what God told us in his word, that in the last days, men are going to become lovers of themselves. They're going to wax cold. They're going to have itching ears, turn to doctors, satisfy their itching ears. They're going to find things to appease their flesh and be less become a lovers of God. And we're living in a time, you look in the news, all this unmerciful killing going on. Mass shootings, different places that you never heard of. Churches being shot up. All because of the seed of offense have been sown in somebody's heart. And God is saying tonight, if you're one of those individuals who is holding on to any form of unforgiveness, it may have been 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, you need to get to the root cause of that thing and allow God to dig up that root and burn it in the fire of the Spirit that you can be set free on the inside. You might be 60, you might be 50, you might be 40, might be 30. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't have an age limit on a fence. It can be a child from a childhood holding on to a fence all through their adulthood years. And God is saying tonight, let go of the seed of a fence that was sown in your heart. That you can pluck it up by the root. Many people have grown a tree of offenses. And that's dangerous. A tree of offenses to where you're shaded by your own offenses. You're covered by your own offenses. And everyone ma magnitude, they, they gravitated like a magnet to this tree of offense because they're offended. Offended people, check this out. Offended people love hanging around offended people. And I've seen this happen because I'm hurt and you're hurt and you're hurt, so we gather around the people who are all hurt, and all we do is nurse, curse, and rehearse the offenses. What somebody done in our lives to hold them responsible to the offense they have done to me over 40 years ago and never let go of it. And God is saying that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So if God is saying this weapon of offenses in your group of offense, God says it needs to be dispersed now. Everyone needs to be delivered. Everyone needs to be healed. Everyone needs to be set free. Because the weapons of our warfare, they're not through fleshly engagement. They're through the spiritual engagement of the Spirit of God. So God comes in with the warfare of the angels to begin to strike down the offenses of the enemy that come against you in your life. And guess what? You change your mind. You change your heart. He blocks the ears from hearing things you shouldn't hear. He fills you with the love of God. He allows you to be forgiven to you can go and forgive somebody else. Why? Because he loved you so much. If God didn't love you, guess what he would have done? He would have let you die a long time ago. All because of his mercies are new every morning. His compassion does not cease. And great is his faithfulness. God has an abundance of faithfulness. It's limitless. He has an abundance of mercy and compassion. It's limitless. There's no limit on God's compassion and mercy. There's no limit on his faithfulness. 
and everything you need God to do in your life, God says that he will do by the spirit of living God. These strongholds creates a set of patterns of reasonings through which all incoming information is processed. So the stronghold of offense is secure. It keeps you secure in your reasonings. So you're going to always have your mind going like a wheel with the same old wicked, unrightful thoughts. And you're constantly pondering over and over in your mind all the junk that people dumped on you in your mind. And you're in a stronghold, a fortified fortress. A stronghold is a fortified fortress. Some place where you're secured, where the enemy can't come in. But instead, you allow the enemy to box you in a fortress of offenses where God can't come in. And God is saying tonight, we got to let go of it. We got to let down our defense, let down the wall, because many of you got a wall. And God's saying, let go of that wall. Let go of selfishness. People don't like to spend their money. Whenever I spend their money on them, God said, let go of your selfishness, your selfish attitude, because it's not of God. And God is saying, when you become a giver, see, that's one thing I learned years ago, sitting under bishops and, and apostles and prophets and wealthy men of God. Then in order to be blessed, you got to be willing to let go. Whatever you love the most, you got to let go of it. And God said, if you love your money more than anything else, God said, let go of it. Because when you let go and become a giver to somebody else, guess what God does? He said, give, it'll come back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom? I'm a living witness. It happens all the time because I'm a giver. I don't mind giving people my last dime because it doesn't matter what I have because I know I've got more in the heavenly bank account. Everything I need, God promises that he will supply according to his riches where? In glory. So if you're selfish tonight, let it go. Let God break that wall down tonight to break that spirit off your mind and off your heart because he's trying to set you free tonight. No matter what your offense may be, so I'm going to get offended from this lesson tonight, but it's okay because as long as it convicts your heart, maybe it convicts you enough to change. And that's what God's word does. He said the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter, whom the Father will send in my name, he will convict the world of sin. And God is speaking tonight. If you're being convicted, God is talking to you. If you're being convicted in your heart and you're getting upset because of the lesson tonight, God is speaking to you. Let your wall down. And I guarantee the Holy Spirit will come in and clean your house, begin to fill your house with the fruit of the Spirit, that your attitude will be changed to the attitude of Christ. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Then the word says, Romans 12 and 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God is speaking tonight. He's speaking tonight. I hope you're listening. Anyone got any comments? Put it on tonight. Send those likes on tonight. Send some hearts up tonight. If this is really blessing your heart, send up some hearts tonight. Because God is doing something in all of our lives. And I feel strongholds are breaking. He's breaking in my life and breaking in your life. I feel it. Because these strongholds, they want to keep you boxed in. All they were originally erected for protection. Check this out. They become a source of of torment and distortion because they war against the knowing or knowledge of God. That is deep. That is deep right there. That's deep. We build up our wall of protection because we got to protect our hearts. If I've been hurt, I don't want to be hurt again. I've been abused, I don't want to be abused again. So I build this wall up. But God is saying tonight, he's setting you free from the inside out by the spirit of living God. 
when we filter everything through past hurts, rejections, and experiences, we find it impossible to believe God. And that's what a lot of people in the body of Christ do with themselves. They filter, remind themselves over and over about all the stuff that's been done to them that put a scar on your heart and cause you to have pain, to get into a place of unbelief, in a dark place, to where you shut down God from speaking to you and you find it impossible to believe God to set you free. But I want you to know tonight there's hope in the presence of the Lord. We cannot believe he means what he says. So we doubt his goodness and faithfulness since we judge him by the standards set by man on our lives. So we judge God by the standards of men on our lives instead of believing God's word. Right? But God is not a man that he should lie, nor son of man he should repent. But what he promised, he also was to form it. His ways are not like our ways, his thoughts are not like our thoughts. Offended people will be able to find scripture passages. Check this out. This was really good right here. Offended people will be able to find scripture passages to back their position, but it cannot but it is not the correct division of God's word. Nor can it change their lives. Why? Because I find a scripture to justify my wrongdoing. I find a scripture to justify the reason I got this wall built up in my mind. To keep my heart guarded. Because I refuse to allow myself to be vulnerable to get hurt again. So I find a scripture to justify. And that is a dangerous place to be, my brother and my sister tonight. If you're one of those people who always try to find a scripture just fine when you know you're in error, you need to repent because God is not in that. God is looking for people who recognize their fault for the wages of sin is death with the gifts of God eternal life. And God's looking for a person who's going to say, okay, God, I got the defense in my heart. I've been hurt by this certain individual. Well, many people, I've been violated, I've been abused, I've been raped, I've been molested. All this stuff happened to me, God. I've been talked about since I was a child that I'll never be no good. I've been slandered. I've been ostracized. I've been always just set outside the camp. No one seemed to care about me. So I built this wall around myself for my own protection, my wall of protection. And I need you, God, to come into my heart. To let when God told Nehemiah to build the wall to rebuild the wall of the city that, that his ancestor built that were torn down by the enemy. He built the wall and he sealed the breaches. So God, I need you to come into my heart right now where I built up my own wall that you break it down with the jackhammer of the spirit. Tear it down, God, and build your wall of protection in my life that I can trust you I can believe you. I can stand on your word. I can know with confidence and greater he that's in me than he's in the world. I don't have to fear no man, for God is with me. If God be for me, who can separate me from the love of God? When you have that type of attitude, the Spirit of God comes in. He fills your life with such peace and gentleness of spirit compassion, a loving heart, a caring heart, a humble heart. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. God is looking for a people who's humble tonight. The knowledge of God's word without love is destructive force because it puffs us up with pride and legalism. So if you call yourself trying to hold on to God's word without having God's love in your heart, you leave yourself vulnerable for the enemy to come into your life to build you up, to make you arrogant, to make you haughty, make you hurt other people, make you talk about folk, become a tailbearer, a backbiter, 
a whoremonger, a liar, a thief. All these things stem from the behavior patterns of the enemy who you allow to inter infiltrate your structure. So you come to your structure for annihilation to destroy your life. And if you allow him to come in, guess what he's going to do? He takes control and he leaves you vulnerable and he strips you naked so we have no power to fight anything anymore. But I want you to know tonight that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, but all we can ask or think. He's able to take away your nakedness, your filthy garments, and clothe you in himself. That's what the word tells us. God is able to... Let me go to this one scripture, because I want to read this. This is, this is a good scripture for you tonight. Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We praise your name. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4. It says, therefore, so this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Okay? But then you go to verse 20, it says, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, right? But then it says, verse 24, that ye put on the new man, which is after God, created in righteousness and true holiness. So as Ephesians chapter 4, I read 20, I mean 19, correction, I read 20 and through 24. So it's very important as a child of God. And then verse 17. So if you walk in the word, allow God to close you in the word, to take away the garments of the world, guess what he does? He fills your mind with his nature, with his character, his attitude, his loving kindness, that you be merciful towards other people who are unmerciful, that you keep on allowing the Spirit of God to use you as a vessel of light and not darkness. When you allow yourself to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, God knows exactly what you need in every situation. So no matter what the enemy brings to you to destroy you, God says you need not to fight for the Lord himself will fight for you, right? So this causes us to justify ourselves rather than repent of unforgiveness. So if I try to hold on to God's word without love, I become my own defense. Some of come with all types of reasons why well, I need to hold on to my offenses, as we talked about earlier. This creates an atmosphere in which we can be deceived because the knowledge without love, because knowledge without love, because knowledge without love of God will lead to deception. If I don't have the love of God through the knowledge of the word of God, I leave myself open for deception. And God is trying to warn us as children of the most high God, stay in the word. No matter what people have done to you, no matter what they have said to you to hurt you, God is saying tonight, let go of the offense and allow the Spirit of God to bring healing and deliverance in your heart, in your soul, my God, your ear gates. Your ear gates are the most vulnerable place on your body where the enemy uses to assassinate your purpose because he speaks into your ears. And God is saying tonight, Guard your ear gates. You guard your ear gates, 
you can guard your mind. You guard your mind, you can guard your heart. For Ephesians 4, I mean, Proverbs 4.23, Proverbs 4.23 said, and guard your heart, for out of it flows the issue of life. So the issues are the things that we identify in life. God said, you guard your heart because your course of life is set on the issues of whatever comes into your life, what you allow into your life. So if I allow negativity and negative people to continue to surround me in my circle, I'm leaving myself vulnerable for destruction and deception. But God is warning us tonight to allow the Spirit of God to close you in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you do that, you'll find yourself being aware of the enemy's tactic, being on guard, being sensitive to the move of the Spirit of God, and know how to respond when offense comes to you. Because a lot of people, I'm going to say this one point before we close out tonight. A lot of people in the body of Christ have not been taught how to deal with offenses. We learn through society from watching other people. But I tell you, Jesus told the disciples in Luke chapter 17 and 1, said, he said, it's impossible that offenses should not come. So in part of life circumstance, we're going to have offenses. But how you deal with it responds to the attitude of Christ inside of you or the fleshly nature. So I have God's mind, the mind of Christ inside of me. So when offenses do come, the word teaches me that no matter who offends me, I can learn how to respond with the word of God. Many times I've been in predicaments where I could have been reactive when someone came to me negatively. But because of years of studying God's word and allowing the spirit of God to teach me discipline, I'm able to be more quick to hear than to rattle off out of my mouth and give people peace of my mind. So that's the point for some of y'all right now. Don't be quick to speak. Be quick to hear. Because if you're quick to hear, the Holy Spirit would tell you what to speak to an individual, shut them down when they come under the influence of the enemy. Don't be argumentative with people. Don't be confrontational with people. Don't debate over the word of God with people. Because if you know who you are in Christ Jesus, freedom comes when I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Jesus warns of false prophets. Immediately after the statement, many will be offended. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Matthew chapter 24, verse 11. Matthew chapter 24, verse 11. Who are the many that will deceive? The answer, the offended, who love has not grown cold. The offended whose love has not grown cold. So just because offense come, don't allow your love to grow cold. Don't allow your love to be shut down. Don't allow the enemy to silence your voice. You speak what the Holy Spirit tells you to speak, not what your flesh want to speak. Because your flesh will get you in more trouble and make things worse than listen to the Holy Spirit. Because the Spirit tells you, respond in love. Respond with the word. That's one thing I love about Luke chapter 4. When Jesus was led to the wilderness by the enemy, he tempted he never one time responded to the enemy according to his flesh. He responded with the word. And that's what we need to learn tonight, my brother, my sister. In order to overcome offenses, learn your word. Get in your Bible. Read that word. Get it in your spirit. Nurture that word in your heart. Allow that word to mature you. Come off the bottle. Get some meat of the word in you. Allow that word to make you strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I guarantee you'll find such a peace that surpasses all natural comprehension because of the love of God has not grown cold in your heart. So Lord God, tonight I thank you for this word. I thank you for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit that you convict all of our hearts that we take a moment to sit down and examine our hearts to see what's in it that's not of you, God, that you purge it out. Break down the wall of protection 
that we built up to keep ourselves from being offended again by other people. Help us to allow you to build a wall of the spirit around us to guard and protect us from the walls of the devil. That we put on our garments of warfare to stand against the walls of the devil. That you would be glorified. And I thank you, Lord God, that you that you working in our lives, oh God, to make us better every day. Now, God, forgive us for our sins. I want you to repeat this prayer for me. Lord, forgive me for our sins, knowingly and unknowingly. And come into my heart and wash me clean. I thank you, Lord God, for the sacrifice that paid the price for offenses, that paid the price for rebellion, for my stubbornness, for my prideful heart. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit that I will be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You prayed that prayer. God is doing something great in your life. Your heart is changing because of the word of God inside of you. Read the fourth chapter of St. Luke when you get a chance. You'll find it very interesting. And they teach you how to respond to offense the same way Jesus did in the wilderness. Because one thing about it, you're going to always be tested, you're going to always be tried, and the enemy can always try to test your character and your integrity and your loyalty to God to make you fall. But if you know without a shadow of a doubt whose you are and who you are in Christ Jesus, every day you're going to stand with a purpose for purpose. You're going to walk by faith and not by sight. You're going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and take off the garment of the world that the Holy Spirit will be your leader to guide you every day into all truth. Amen. I want to thank everyone for coming on tonight. I pray this helps somebody. I don't know about you, but it's helping me. I, I, I tell you, I'm, I'm full. I'm full on this word. I'm full on this word. I'm loving it. God is doing something extraordinary in our lives. We got to be aware and sensitive to the move of the Holy Spirit. If you want to sow a seed into the ministry, I'm going to post the link tonight because we need, we need your help for the ministry. And um, also, uh, this weekend, I will be going to uh, Tennessee to speak in one of my cousin's churches down at 6th Street Baptist Church in uh, Humboldt, Tennessee. I'll be going down there this coming weekend to speak at their church. So I solicit your prayers that God will go with me and my fiance to keep us safe as we travel down the road. If you want to sow a seed to help us out, we sure can use it. Things are a little tight, but my God always makes things right. That's one thing about it. It doesn't matter what we go through. God is able to provide just what you have need of when you need it the most. And I tell you, I'm always a faith walker. If I have $100, I said, God, I'm going to take this $100 and trust you that it's going to expand, that you'll get your, get your glory and meet my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And also, I encourage you to share this video with someone else. Also, I post the link for my YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. You'll find all the lessons on there from the previous Bible class uh, studies also, you'll find the radio program that I'm on every week, every Thursday at 2.30 here in Milwaukee, Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM. You'll find all the radio recordings on there as well. I tell you, God is doing a great work in all of our lives, and we couldn't do it without your support. And I thank God for the people of God and the body of Christ who's always praying for us because we get so many different compliments from our radio program. We get compliments from the Bible studies because God is doing some work in our lives to make us better every day. But you got to want it. I'm going to say this one point, and then I'm going to go ahead and close out in prayer. How bad do you want change in your life? How bad do you want to be filled with the Spirit of God? How bad do you want God to use you? And if you want God to, to move in your life badly, then let God do it by you learning how to surrender, yield, and release yourself to the will of God every day of your life. And to guarantee God will use you for his glory. So you all be blessed today. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, 
for those who heard this word tonight, oh God, that it touched their hearts, changed their lives forever. And Lord God, we pray blessings over every person who may be traveling tonight, oh God, that you keep them safe from danger, seen and unseen, and that you be their protector and dispatch your angels to stand at guard around them as they travel on their doorposts at their homes, that no violator of any kind will enter to their houses, God, and that they will rest in peace in the presence of the Lord, and that their sleep will be peaceful and glorious. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post your question or comments tonight before we go. Amen. But again, I, I want to truly thank you all for, for tuning in tonight. There were some people on, some fell off. I see some fell off. It doesn't matter because I still do it. Even one person on here tonight. This is just how much I love God. I'll teach his word if I'm by myself because I've done that many times I first started. I was always by myself teaching God's word regardless. And people come back later and comment on the word how much it blessed their life. So you all stay encouraged. Stay excited about Jesus. Know that I love you and God loves you too. Have a good night. Shalom. Peace, blessings, and favor be upon your life. Amen.